we welcome you to the sermon today. It's titled, The Little Children. If you will, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18, 1 to 5. This will be the text for our lesson today. Matthew 18, 1 to 5. Verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? The disciples asked Jesus about who is the greatest, the greatest of position and status in the kingdom. According to Luke, there was even a dispute. Luke 9, 46. Then a dispute arose among them as to which of them would be the greatest. Mark's account includes the record of the earlier dispute on the road to Capernaum. Mark 9, 33 to 35. Then Jesus came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? But they kept silent, for on the road they had disputed among themselves who would be the greatest. And he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all, and servant of all. And so Jesus was aware of their dispute. In verse 33, when Jesus asked, what was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? He knew. But as the master teacher, he asked them to teach them. But they kept silent. It was a shameful matter. They kept silent. Why? Because on the road, they had disputed among themselves who would be the greatest. Each desired to be the greatest. Each desired to be the first. And Jesus sat down, called the 12 apostles, the disciples, and he said to them, if anyone desires to be first, that is to be the greatest, the greatest in the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, he shall be last of all and servant of all. It was a matter of status. The disciples had disputed among themselves who would be the greatest. They each wanted to be the greatest. Each desired to be the first in the kingdom. Not first as in arrival or entry, but first as in importance and status and greatness. Love was said to be the greatest, the first commandment, the first, the foremost. But each of these wanted to be the greatest. They wanted to be the first. Matthew 18 and 2, then Jesus called a little child to him and sat him in the midst of them. Jesus responded to his disciples, the 12, with an active parable in the form of a little child. He set the little boy by him, by himself, among the disciples. Jesus knew their hearts. Luke 9 and 47, And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a little child and set him by him. Jesus picked up the little boy, according to Mark 9 and 36. Then he took a little child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them. What a beautiful picture of Jesus taking a little child and setting the little boy by himself. Then taking the little child up in his arms and then speaking to his disciples. What an illustration. Verse 3, And said, Assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted 
and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Look at the importance of the matter. If you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must become as little children. They were disputing about who would be the greatest among them in the kingdom of heaven. They were disputing about who would be the first among them in the kingdom of heaven, as in greatness. And Jesus said that if you wish to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must become as little children. Jesus knew their thoughts. He knew what they were thinking. And so he told them that unless you are converted, this term may be translated as turn. Metaphorically, they needed to change their hearts. They needed to turn or change their hearts. And with pride and ambition for greatness, to be first in status in the approaching kingdom of heaven, they needed to repent. They needed repentance. The disciples desired to be the greatest, to be the first in the kingdom. Jesus teaches his disciples that they needed to become as little children. Not that they literally become little children, but they become as little children. People saw children as having little status. When they thought of first, they did not think of children. Consider what Jesus taught next. He taught them to be converted. They needed to turn. They needed to repent of their pride. They need to lower themselves. This same term is, is found elsewhere in the New Testament. But consider what Jesus taught his disciples to do next. Verse 4. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus focuses the attention of his disciples upon the little child, that little boy, who he called to himself, who he sat among himself, that he lifted up in his arms. And he taught his disciples to humble themselves as the little boy that he had lifted up in his arms. The disciples, with their pride, needed to be converted. They needed to turn or repent of their pride. In Acts chapter 2 and 38, in Acts 2 and 38, Jesus teaches, the, the disciples of Jesus teach those who were gathered on the day of Pentecost what they needed to do in order to be saved. And he said in verse 38, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of your sins. Later on in Acts 3 and 19, he said, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Here we see the parallel between the two. Repent and repent. Be baptized, be converted. For remission of your sins, that your sins may be blotted out. The word converted in Acts 3.19 in that passage describes one being baptized into Christ. One's conversion in becoming a Christian. Here in this particular passage, you have disciples being converted in the sense of them turning from their sins, particularly their pride. Verse 5, whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. 
In the context, the receiving of a little child referred not to the actual child, but the believer. He refers to the one who accepts the believer, who is unconcerned about status, who humbly trusts in the Lord. If you receive the believer who humbly trusts in God, you receive Jesus and his word. You receive not only Jesus, the Son of God, but the Father who sent him. Mark 9, 37. There were those who professed faith in the Father, but who denied Jesus as the Son. Mark 9 and 37, whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Think about that. To be great, if they truly desire to be great, they should be least like the little child. Luke 9 and 48, Jesus said to them, whoever receives this little child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all will be great. And so, disciples, if you truly desire to be great, humble yourselves. Jesus loves the little children. I think of the song, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus took the time to show such care, concern, and love for the little children. While the world at the time may have looked at children as being last in status, Jesus took the time and showed the care and, and attention. To the littlest of people, the little children. And Matthew 9, 13 to 15, when li then little children were brought to him, that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is of the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them. And departed from there. Think about this. Verse 13. People brought their children to Jesus. Why? They brought their children. They brought little children to Jesus so that he might put, their, put his hands on them. And pray for them. And bless them. Why? Because they were their little children. The disciples rebuked them. Let the, Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Why did they rebuke those who brought the children to Jesus? Perhaps the disciples thought that Jesus was too busy in the work, preaching the gospel of the, of the kingdom of heaven, to, to take the time to put his hands on the children and pray. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them. He said, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. He had taught this lesson, as we have studied today. Humble yourselves as little children. Jesus laid his hands on them, and he departed from them. There are other passages like in Mark 10, 13 to 16, that also describe people bringing children to Jesus. Let's read those passages. Mark 10, 13. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. Mark adds, 
that information that we don't see here in Matthew. Jesus was greatly displeased with the disciples, with what they did. And he said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom as a little child will by no means enter it. Again, the lesson, humble yourselves as little children. There's another passage in Luke 18 and 15. Turn for a moment to that passage. Luke 18 and 15. Then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Here he refers to the kingdom of heaven as the kingdom of God. Luke, in his account, also uses the term for infants in Luke 18 and 15. I think of toddlers, perhaps a, a toddler, a boy coming to Jesus, Jesus picking him up in his arms, as we read in our, in our lesson today. But here it appears that uh, these little children, perhaps infants, as we see in the first part of that passage of Luke, being brought to Jesus. And Jesus laying his hands on them, blessing them, praying for them. I'm sure the parents were grateful for Jesus taking the time to show love and concern for them. What many of the people thought of as far as status was concerned were the least of them. But Jesus taught the important lesson, humble yourselves as little children. The lesson today is that as disciples, as Christians, we ought not to concern ourselves with status. Who is the greatest? Who is first in the kingdom? As disciples, humbly trust and serve the Lord. Be content to simply enter in to the kingdom. Humility and humble service is the sign of true greatness. Humble yourselves as little children. Are you a Christian? If you are not, consider being converted in the sense of, of being baptized into Christ. We noted earlier in Acts 2.38 and Acts 3.19 how the person who believes comes to Christ. How that he believes in him as the son of God, repents of his sins, confesses his faith in him, and is baptized for remission of his sins. Men, women, young and old who believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, who understand, repent of your sins, confess your faith in him, and be baptized for remission of your sins. In Acts 3 and 19, he said, repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. In that passage, converted is used in the sense of becoming a Christian, being baptized into Christ for remission of your sins. Remember, it was Jesus who said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Do you believe the gospel that Jesus died for your sins? Do you believe the gospel of the kingdom? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? If you believe, confess your faith in Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Like the Ethiopian did in Acts chapter 8, who saw the water and said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? If you believe with all your heart, you may. He believed and he confessed his faith. And we see that they went down into the water, that the evangelist baptized him. 
Are you a Christian? But you've been unfaithful. Perhaps some matter, such as pride, has entered into your heart. Your heart is not right with God. We learn in Acts chapter 8 as well that if your heart is not right with God, repent and pray that God will forgive you. He will. He loves you. He cares for you. Will you repent of your sins today? Will you humbly trust and serve the Lord? We hope you will. We hope you do. Thank you for being here today to study with us from this passage in the Word of God.